Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We're in Matthew chapter five, continuing with this theme. You've heard it said this, but I tell you that some of what Jesus says when he says this is an Old Testament law, and some of it's just a rabbinical teaching or a common phrase that was like pop psychology or religious psychology or practice or habit within the original context. And then he says, but I tell you that. Watch this. Here's Matthew chapter five, verse 33. Again, you have heard that it was said to our ancestors, you must not break your oath, but you must keep your oaths to the Lord. Okay, here he's quoted Deuteron- uh, Leviticus 19, 12 and, and Numbers 30, verse 2 and Deuteronomy 23, 21. But I tell you, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven because it's God's throne or by the earth because it is his footstool or by Jerusalem because it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head because you cannot make a single hair white or black. But let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. All right, that last sentence is mind-blowingly profound. Let's back up and let's get it in context. Because he quoted uh, an Old Testament teaching, but then he listed all these other examples. Don't swear by your head. Don't swear by Jerusalem. What is that all about? Actually, some of, this, some, uh, some of these phrases are even still used in uh, modern pagan faith systems. You'll hear some similar language to these kinds of oaths in Islam, for example. So he gives this example first, quoting the Old Testament, you must not break your oath, but you must keep your oaths to the Lord. But I tell you, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven, because that's God's throne, or by the earth. Right? What's, what's remarkable is that people were making oaths by heaven, by the earth, by Jerusalem, by their, uh, their heads? I guess. I don't know. (laughs) And Jesus is saying, like, you don't have authority over those things. You don't have the title deed to the earth. You don't own the city of Jerusalem. If you break your promise to this person, they have no recourse against you because you don't have heaven to give them. You can't give them your head for crying out loud. Moreover, you can't even make one hair white or black. Um, yeah, excuse me, Jesse. I have hair club for men (laughs) and I can dye my white hair. No, you can't, Carl. We all know what color your hair actually is, okay? You're like Creed from The Office. You just took toner from the printer and colored your white hair. We all know what, what, hair, what your hair color actually is. Okay, so like, he's like, stop making overly exaggerated hyperbolic promises that you don't have the authority to cash in. That you're betting something you don't own on the matter. So this is dishonest. Instead... Let your yes mean yes. Let your no mean no. Now he goes on to say something else that raises the stakes incredibly, but just that portion right there is enough to to chew on for a moment because we all know people like this. And hopefully we're striving to be people like these whose yes is always yes and whose no is always a no. And it's clear, you know exactly where they stand and they follow through on their word, right? If it's ever beyond your control, especially as a dad, I feel terribly when... If I tell my kids something's going to happen, it's going to happen, period. I always make it happen. And sometimes my tactic in trying to abide by this verse was not to really promise anything because I never wanted to make them a promise I couldn't keep. But then as a result, I ended up taking fewer risks. And, and so I've, I've found myself kind of deviating a little bit more on the risky side in recent years. And the Lord has helped me make sure that all my yeses are always yes. This has actually come up within pop psychology today. And it's been echoed. Okay, because there's a guy who can throw a football really well, who quoted it from a book, and then suddenly that book became a bestseller. Just because this guy who can throw an inflated piece of leather really well, quoted from it. See how stupid we are? A football guy said that, and so go buy that book and live by it now. Like, <laughs> look, Jesus said it first, and he said it better. <laughs> All right, it's not about being impeccable in your word. Okay, the seven promises quoted by Tom Brady. No, it, this is way better. This is Jesus, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. That's way better than be impeccable in your word. But Jesus then takes the teaching way farther than Tom Brady has the authority to, right? It's anything other than this, anything anything more than this is from the evil one. That's Matthew 5, 37. Well, that raises the stakes considerably, doesn't it? It's way more than just be impeccable in your word. Absolutely. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. And when we go beyond that and we start writing checks that we can't cash with our promises, we're lying. And when we lie, we speak the native tongue of the devil. 
it is evil. Like we said before in previous devotions, when the devil lies, he speaks his native tongue. And when we make promises that we cannot keep overly exaggerating our gravitas behind our word, then we're trying to portray false confidence. We're putting on airs of credibility and reliability that we have no intention of following through on. Okay, you don't bet your neighbor's car on something. You can't, you don't, it's not yours. So don't do that. That's lying. That's of the evil one. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no.